is going on guys it's your boy Cesar here bringing the photoshop slash cinema 4d tutorial here today so as always that pretty much means i'm doing 3d and as you can see in my little preview here we have a pretty cool little action sort of themed header design here today i don't know what it's called yet it's probably like action bullets and motion blur in it i don't know because that's pretty much all we did in this video here today but i think it looks really crisp really awesome and with games like pubg h1z1 call of duty coming out soon all those things have really cool bullets in it i think this sort of style to this little banner here has a really attractive look to it looks kind of heroic looks kind of like postery that looks pretty freaking cool in my opinion so hope you guys do enjoy this video here today i start off in cinema 4d showing you guys how to do the text and then i show you guys how to model my own i actually model my own bullet there that looks pretty cool um show you guys i model the bullet and then of course finalize everything in photoshop putting it all together put some lighting effects in and making it look super freaking cool so this is my preview of the actual video itself but this is a tutorial and version of it so it looks pretty cool in my opinion looks really dope i probably could have done with the change of the actual material but I don't really care about it right now. I think it looks pretty okay. Still satisfied with it. And I'm really happy. And hopefully you guys enjoy it as well. So, I'll talk to you guys in a second. Because I'm going to start off with some 4D. And I'll talk to you guys in a second. I'm going to say that again. Because why not? Perfect transition word. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go ahead and get this Cinema 4D part of the video out of the way. So pretty much, I'm going to show you guys how to make your own cool little text and, of course, how to model your own bullets. Now, in the description down below should be a file for a default Lightroom inside Cinema 4D, as well as a nice little bullet render or bullet model for you guys if you guys want to use your own, not actually model your own, that I'm also going to teach you in the video here today. I'm not the best model in the world, by the way. I just tried my very hardest, and I think I I succeeded pretty okay. Like, I think I did okay. So let's go ahead and get this thing going by starting off with the actual text itself. And for now, I'm just going to hide these bullets in here. And I'm also going to delete these little mo text in here because I'm going to drag in my own. So I'm going to mo graph, mo text. I'll just drag it back here for now, though. And pretty much the first thing I'm going to do is change my depth from whatever it is to 50 centimeters. And then I'm going to go ahead and change my alignment to the middle. That way, I can always be in the middle. And I'm always, you know, looking okay. Of course, change my font name, I guess, or text name, excuse me. And I'm going to use the word action again. And the font that I use in this video here today, what was it called? Gotham Narrow Ultra. Right, so I'm now dragging a nice little material on really quickly so I can show you guys what a render looks like and how quickly it changes when you add some fillet caps to it. So, I add a nice little material on it. Of course, change your material projection to cubic and seamless. Very basic stuff here. If you guys ever watch any of my three tutorials, then you guys already know this stuff. It's kind of like I'm like going through it nice and quickly. However, if I were to render this out really quickly, you'll see it's very boring looking. It looks very like it, there's no character to it whatsoever. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click back on this Motex. I'm gonna go to the word caps here. And we're going to start and end. You're going to change these both from cap to fill a cap themselves. And you're going to change your steps to 20. And you're going to change your radiuses to 3. So 20, 3, and then 20, 3. So if I were to render this now, again, you'll see it just has way, way more character like in like an instant. You know, that was my terrible try at a snap. But as you can see, it looks really, really uh, like really freaking cool. So now we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to basically control C, control V to actually make a duplicate of this text now. And we're going to drag in a red in here. And with this red material, we're going to actually change our fillet caps to 5 and not 3. So basically, if you guys can just make a nice little small little inference, you'll see, basically, if I re-rendered it, uh, none of the little black material is not going to be able to see, like, be seen because you've made the radius more like bubbly and it's kind of covering the black. So what's going to happen here is, if I click back on this red material, the text, I'm going to go to the object here, change my depth from 50 to 30 centimeters, and you'll see over here, it kind of like shrinks a little bit. So what's going to happen here, I'm going to take this little blue arrow to drag it backwards. So I can see halfway between the actual, I guess it's kind of halfway, right? It's pretty much halfway. If I re-rendered it now, you're going to see the black text itself, right? With the red. So I'm going to click over here to re-render it again. Right? Just like so. And you'll see like the black text with the red outline, which looks way freaking cooler than anything like you just did before. If you just like kept it normal and automatically like, get this kind of like weird heroic text vibe. It looks really cool, really dope, and I think it looks just perfectly fine. So now I'm going to show you guys how I actually do the render or the uh, bullet render, I guess, the bullet object. I'm not, like I said, I'm not the best model in the world, but I'm going to give it my dangest shot. And I know all the models in my chat are going to be like, yo, this is, this is, this is bad. I said in my chat, by the way, I noticed. I know, I've been streaming a little bit, a little bit more recently. So, yep, I'm going to show you guys that right now. Let's go and get this thing going. All right, guys, and let me go ahead and show you guys how to actually do this little bullet part of this video now. What you can do is you see this up here right here that shows you basically four different perspectives. Up here right here, what the heck? It shows you different perspectives of your actual working field. It shows your obvious 3D perspective here. It shows your top perspective there, right perspective, and then frontal perspective. What you're going to want to do is click on the frontal perspective. Now, if you have a middle click on your mouse, which you probably should, it's a very quick, simple little shortcut to do that. Just like by clicking the middle mouse button to bring it up and then clicking the middle mouse button on whatever selected one you want, which is, is the front perspective. So 
what's going to happen here is you want to make sure you angle yourself that this green and this red line is visible because that basically tells you hey this is halfway and this is like the middle so that's what you kind of want to make sure you understand in your head so what's going to happen here is i'm going to use my pen tool in cinema 4d to actually pen tool out my uh what do you call it the bullet there we go so on this little red line here i'm gonna click over here though i'll say like right about here and i'm gonna go up one two three four five squares just like so and click again and if i click somewhere like maybe uh let's just say one square before the middle here like the uh this little green line if i click and drag this will of course give you guys some angles which is basically like the whole entire it's basically just like photoshop i don't know why you can't see my uh whatchamacallit's the uh the, the anchor points but you'll you'll basically know it's just basically just like photoshop so you click and drag make a nice little curve there and i'll say like right about here which is basically one two three four uh five should we go four i think we should go four four squares away from the green line so if i click once again you'll see a very simple curve just attaches as well and you got a very simple like i guess a little arch with a line going down that's basically all you need to actually complete this so pretty much now i'm going to go back into my regular perspective here so as you see that red line there indicates where the middle is and what's going to happen here i'm going to drag in this i think it's called lathe right if you drag this spline into the lathe thingy the lathe spline sure you know i just move up a little bit so you can see what the heck's going on right you get something like this so what's gonna happen here i'm gonna go click on spline again i'm gonna go to this little b under coordinates here change my b from zero to 90 degrees just like so and then right away you're gonna get yourself a nice little cool bullet looking shape here now if for whatever reason your bullet maybe looks something like let's say it looks something like this right and you might actually run into this problem because i actually i've actually run into myself and i was actually figuring it out i was like why the heck does it look like really weird and look like this just go back into your front perspective click this little highlighted yeah it should probably be highlighted yellow anyway click it and then just drag it and move it to where you feel like you need to move it to which is going to be basically around here so if i go back now you'll see it'll look more like that sort of bullet shape that you're looking for right so now i can go ahead and just make this upside right just like so drag this up a little bit maybe i'll shrink it down a little bit because i know it's pretty big compared to my text what's going to happen here is now that i can just basically press c on my keyboard to make this little lathe uh spline object editable right it just changes to a nice little blue triangle and if i were to click on my polygons you'll be able to see all the polygons that you can select now so what's going to happen here is i'm going to basically move this up to about here right so i can see the tip of this little bullet here i'm gonna press ul on my keyboard and what's going to happen here is i'm gonna select all these like loop regions so i'm i'm basically holding shift as well to select multiple regions of it uh let's just go with i guess that's pretty much good enough right basically the tip of the bullet itself you want to take your move tool now and then just take your green and just move this a little bit further down i'll say right about here that way you kind of get that nice little sort of lip where the bullet would be and i think that looks pretty okay to how a bullet should look i guess and i do know that it doesn't have like a nice thing there i guess a a flat little point of it i don't know why the heck i didn't do that i just i should have fixed that but i thought it looked cool i thought it would look cool but you know you can make it more pointy inside that little the frontal perspective object thing but you can't do that now because you can't go back however you guys know how to fix it and stuff if you feel like it but for tutorial purposes this is how it should look and then basically if you select the entire sort of top half the side uh, i guess the top tip of the actual bullet itself drag it down a little bit with a green arrow you get something like this which is pretty freaking cool if i can find it here actually yeah that way you can see it right so what's gonna happen here now i'm gonna go into the ul uh, t uh, key again there we go i'm gonna go ahead and click here i'm gonna go ahead and use inner shift or excuse me extrude inner to actually give myself a nice little uh little strip here if you guys choose to like i said the ul is basically how you use your loop region tool i don't know if i said that before but if you press ul on your keyboard you get the loop region selection that's how you basically select multiple different regions going all the way around the entire thing so pretty much extrude inner just to give myself a little something like this something that's basically close to the bottom however um just not like super close where it's like you know not this entire thing right if i go back really quickly not this entire thing i want i don't want this entire selection i want to extrude the inner to give myself a nice little strip just like so right but if yours has like a nice little strip that looks like this it's further away from the actual end of it you're perfectly fine so if i click on the bevel now and then just basically click once and then drag it towards the right I can give myself a nice little indention right here if i render that really quickly you'll see an indention here and i set a point here now my my bullet's very like i guess how you'd say uh very thick or i don't know just short and stubby um we're gonna make our we're gonna make it a little bit bigger though what we're gonna do here is we're gonna click on this little back to the model itself click on the actual scale tool take our green and just basically 
do some a little like that, right? It's kind of sh like stretch it out a little bit. So what's gonna happen here is I can go back to this little poly uh, polygon here, and I'll be able to see what I want to work with on the bottom really quick. So for the bottom, I want to make the little, I guess the, uh, how do you call it, the pin, I guess the pin to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the middle, or excuse me, the bottom here. So bo both these little loop regions. And I'm gonna go ahead and just right click, extrude inner one more time, right? Cause we want basically this entire thing, we wanna have that little middle part be still empty, or excuse me, uh, still, uh, I guess, apparent or closer to the person itself. Cause, that, cause that's like the little pin to it, right? I don't know, can you tell I don't work with guns? Um, basically, I'm gonna take the bevel again, and then click and drag to the right just like so to give myself like a nice little pin right in the middle and also have this little indention here that kind of looks like a bullet i think that's pretty freaking fair and i think that's like a-ok -okay in my eyes that looks like a bullet and pretty much that's that's pretty much it okay all right we did it we did it clap it up we did it <laughs> can you tell i suck at this all right let's keep going okay guys now to finish out this little cinema 4d part of this video i'm going to bring in back the text here and i'm also going to shrink this thing down that way we can actually get it to a simple size where it matches our text a little bit more and i'm gonna bring this to the middle here and so we can get ourselves a nice perspective right okay so when you have your bullet inside your little file there i'm going to give this a nice little gold color here just like so if i render it out oops i didn't put it on uh i mean it looks actually pretty okay even if I didn't change it to, uh, how do you call it? Cubic. Seamless. I don't think it changes it because of the things I have. Yeah, it's fine. So basically, that's my little bullet like material for and I think it looks pretty okay. Now, basically, any gold kind of works for me. I just kind of like, you know, mess around with it a little bit. So what I'm going to go ahead and just shrink this a little bit more. Rotate it to get our first little bullet going on here. So I'm going to drag this maybe around here. Right? Now, let's go ahead and say we make another one. So, control C, V if you want to go ahead and just copy it. And I'm making another one going down here. Very simple. Just It's basically how you want to set it up, right? Now, for myself, I kind of want to actually do a different sort of angle when I actually render it out itself. Because right there, I had like something like this, right? Very sort of in your face, like very in the middle. It wasn't like nothing was crooked or anything like that. Which words right here, right? It's just very in your face. It's very just, there's no sort of angle with the text itself. But I want to try something different for this tutorial. But, you know, you know what I mean. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm gonna make this one maybe, maybe a little smaller and then trying to give myself some depth of field going on here. So let me put one in front of it. Like this should be in front of it, right? This one is in front of it. So I got my nice little, I wanna get a nice little reflection in there as well. I'm gonna put this one in front of the text. We're gonna drag it somewhere like right here maybe. So if I were to render this out really quickly, I should see like some sort of reflection right here. Yep, nice. So now we got ourselves a nice little reflection as well. And let's go ahead and say, let's put a nice little big bullet like coming at us a little bit more. Let's just say a nice little bigger bullet, move it like over here, and then let's just say not, I don't want to cover the text itself, but something like that. Or I could even make one even going towards this way. I should even do that in the actual render. Let's just try something different on entirely, right? Something like that going that way, and then we'll make one like in the far back maybe going the other way so it's just basically me just playing the AS the scene itself like i can't show you guys how to do this yourself but you can see it down here by the way where how far i'm actually putting it and then let's just put one like over there right this one has to probably be a lot smaller actually because it's a lot further away make sure we get our perspectives right so if i just render it out really quickly i'll see myself where i'm where i'm, where I'm working with basically um okay okay all right it looks pretty okay now let's just go ahead and fix it a little bit more and I think I'm gonna add one last one basically over here in the bottom, shrink it down a little bit, rotate it and make it go like something like that. Okay. I think I filled my space pretty okay. Now I'm gonna say I move, move this one a little further like this way so I can fill my space out. I think it looks pretty okay. All, all of it's pretty much centered the way I kind of want it. Um, I'm just gonna fix, dude, I can always fix it. I can always fix it however I want to. Let's just say like that. All right. So basically, once you have your sort of bullets where you want to have them, and then I think this looks pretty okay. Like, I can still mess around with it, though. I think this looks pretty okay. So when I actually render it out myself, I want to render it out maybe on an angle. So I'm going to put myself, like, on this sort of angle here. So when I put it in, it'll look, like, a little bit differently. Let's just say, let's say, like, something like this, maybe. I don't know. Like this more of an angle so if i now render it out really quickly you'll see a different sort of angle not sort of like a straight uh perspective point of view something like that might look a little bit cooler right i don't know let's just give it a try and actually just continue the tour of doing something like this 
Okay, so once you actually get your render out, you of course want to save wherever you save it, and all you have to do is make sure that you have your alpha channel selected, that way it renders out with no, basically, background on it itself. So, once you've done that, we're pretty much ready to go, so I'm going to go ahead and render this thing out just like this. Oops, I already have one called that because I already rendered it out. And we're just going to call this, like, I don't know, zero. And we're going to render it out, so basically it shouldn't take that long whatsoever, especially in a Lightroom that's just, like, fairly okay. It's not too much going on here. So I'm going to drag this into Photoshop and get this thing continued going on okay guys now that i have my render inside photoshop i'm ready to go basically i'm gonna go ahead and just show you guys what i'm going on with now the only thing i do have in this file that you guys probably didn't know about just yet is i have a picture in here from call of Duty world at war 2 i basically found myself a nice little google image from google of course like of, of course that's what i just said um pretty much just found my nice little a bigger image it's basically a more than two megabytes of the way it fits my actual canvas and pretty much what i did was i made it a little more bigger and what I actually applied was motion blur. Now you can see it on my original concept here, you probably now make out that there's actually a little tank over here. Now if you really want to choose to do so, I'd actually do this in a re sort of like revamp of the actual project itself. I went ahead and said, hey, maybe I can like depict some areas and sort of take out the motion blur and have the image actually pop out a little bit more. But if you're looking for more of a manipulation kind of style thing, like I guess that would be the direction you would go. But for now, for me, for this video, I just basically picked out just the simple motion blur as the background and then basically had a really cool sort of just text being its own like I guess entity inside the actual banner design right so what I went ahead and did I did the little call duty background I went to filter blur motion blur right and I got myself a nice little eight angle and 103 pixels and then I pressed ok and then immediately got myself a really cool sort of uh, different tone background that looks really good for simple backing right very simple very easy to do and I think that's how I just gonna work that out right so I also went ahead and did is rendered out a couple more uh, bullets but just in kind of the same exact thing but I got rid of the text here I got rid of this little bullet here and of course I just left these bullets right here now what I actually did was I rendered it out and now I have this picture here that way I can fill the outsides of my space a little bit better uh, a little bit better excuse me I just made this a little more bigger let's just say like right about I don't know, like something like that maybe something like that so I can also see myself getting two different sort of bullets in the same direction right it looks pretty good now if I really wanted to I can just get rid of one of these bullets here I don't like how that's placed I'm gonna use my actual mask tool use my brush use a black brush and then get rid of it very simple right so now I can see myself how like it just looks I got more space now I filled more space and now I'm ready to pretty much start this actual banner design so what I ended up doing was I made a new layer <clears throat> I'm holding alt I'm gonna select basically a nice red on my actual canvas itself let's select this one and we're just gonna press a couple times around the text like right there right there and let's kind of uh, select on side as well something like that okay and we're gonna change our blend mode from normal to linear dodge add and then we're gonna lower our opacity down just a little bit but still get that nice really cool intense red now if you want to you can press ctrl u on your keyboard to bring up the hue and saturation while on this layer mess around with your lightness to get more i mean a darker shade or maybe you have to make it lighter something like that or maybe you have to change the actual color itself to a different sort of tone which look like it might look good with other tones as well but for now i'm okay with what's going on right here and i'm gonna continue going so right after this i'm gonna add in immediately a nice little brightness and contrast now i'm gonna give you guys the same exact settings that i had for my uh, example myself so i had a five brightness and I had 40 contrast for the start immediately i get myself a really cool sort of i guess deep rich sharpness tone to the actual uh text itself as you can see right it just looks way better pops out immediately and looks really good so the second thing i did after brightness and contrast was color balance where is it right here and i had my color balance set for five that's 56 five four and 23 and i got myself a really dope blue sort of hue tint which looks really freaking cool and as you can see it's starting to get put together already very simple with just two different things added now i might just go to myself and add a little bit of lightness to this and then add a little bit of negative hue just like so maybe right it looks a little bit better uh okay that's fine all right cool so i just added that just a little bit so right now i'm going to go ahead and add a another red light let's go ahead and go with uh actually add a blue light now let's go ahead and blue light let's go ahead a blue light like right over here i'm not blue i guess like a like a grayish blue i guess basically whatever my material on itself and on the face of the actual front material right i'm gonna click around a little bit this will give myself a little more light as well and i'm gonna use linear dodge add once again lower my brightness down or excuse me lower my opacity down 
I'll lower my lightness just a little bit. Just give myself a little bit of light going on, right? Just like that. Very simple. So now what I'm gonna do is add a little more things to actually bring out this color. So the first thing I did was I added a vibrance, just like so. I put my vibrance at two, I put my saturation all the way up to 85. Now, the reason why I did that was what I basically did is my yellow bullets just did not look very good. So what I ended up doing was click on the actual thumbnail of the vibrance, use a bl uh, black brush, and just, of course, get rid of the uh, gold sort of, uh, how do you say, bullets right away. But also just click around the text itself, but click in a way that you can still see like a little bit of like, see this little harsh red here, harsh red here. That to me looked really freaking cool and I wanted to keep that for sure. So you can see it just looks, it just kind of brings it out. It just makes like color just look a little bit better, a little more cooler, a little sharper. And for me, that just made complete sense and looks really freaking dope. Now, if you wanted to actually put something back in, like if, uh, if you wanted a yellow bullet, you can just use a white brush and then color back in if you wanted to choose so. But for me, I think this is pretty good for what I want. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and add another brightness and contrast because we just add a little bit of little 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 stuff here. We're just going to add another brightness and contrast in. So we're going to add a brightness and contrast at one brightness and then 34 contrast. And immediately again, you're going to see yourself a nice little sharp action going on. And with that little vibrance, uh, like little hue to that, it just looks I don't know, it looks really cool. Now if it's too much brightness for you, you can go ahead and just lower it down. For me right now, it might be a little bit too much. So I'm going to lower it down to maybe like 65. I think that looks a lot better now. All right, we're good with that. So basically after my brightness and contrast, we're gonna go ahead and add in, let's just add in a nice little uh, curve in here. Let's go with an S curve, very simple, small little sleek S curve going on, make our uh, darks dark and our lights a little bit lighter. Pop out that color a little bit more. It looks pretty good there, right? Okay, cool. So basically now I'm gonna go ahead and add one more thing or two more things, I guess, in color corrections. And now if you really wanted to, I can go ahead and say to myself, if this light's a little bit too harsh at the moment, I'll go back in, hue and, uh, hue and saturation on it, control U, and then I can lower it by just putting our lightness up, like the actual saturation of it of itself. Maybe even, maybe change my color around a little bit. And I just don't like how harsh that is right now, but I think it's okay compared to what I have. I just might have too much light going on in that selected area. Let's just say like that, looks a little bit better, right? All right, cool. Maybe it was just too much light that was not working for me. But now for this, we're pretty much almost done. We're literally, I guess we can say we are done. I'm going to add one more brightness and contrast. You're like, all right, bro, you can done with the brightness and contrast yet? No, I'm not. Last brightness and contrast, 27 brightness, and then 14 contrast. And then it kind of just ties everything up. For me, that looks pretty freaking good. Now, if I really want to, I can go ahead and select inside this brightness and just kind of get rid of some areas, but make some areas still look bright. We're gonna get that little sort of like a feel in there, All right? All right, cool. So now what I'm gonna go to do is add a, like a few little things now, right? So we're gonna go ahead and control J, control E, the entire concept. So click on the first uh, first layer, hold shift, click on the last layer, control J to make a duplicate, and then control E to then uh, sort of paste it in there, or excuse me, to merge all the layers in there. So pretty much now we're gonna add a little bit of blur and motion blur. So now I'm gonna go to blur. We're gonna go start off with a Gaussian blur. And we're gonna say like maybe four pixels, three pixels. We'll go at three pixels, press okay. We're gonna bring in our nice little layer mask here and then click on that layer mask thumbnail. Use a black brush and immediately let's get rid of that blur on top of the text. But let's go ahead and focus on these bullets that are over here. Let's make sure that this is sort of faded out or in our, excuse me, out of our vision, like very blurred. If it's this close to our face, it's gonna be pretty blurry. It's not gonna be that sharp. So I'm gonna say that's blurred out as well. Let's blur that out of there. And let's just say this looks pretty okay now for like right now, right? We got a little depth of field going now. Let's go ahead and copy it all again. Control J, Control E. And then we're gonna go to filter, blur, motion blur this time. And we're gonna add a little bit of motion blur. So let's go ahead and say like, angle four is fine. But let's anger, let's change our distance a little bit though. To maybe like, let's say 25 then. 25, okay. Let's go ahead and just add this in here now. Again, the nice little uh, mask there. Use a black brush. And immediately, let's go ahead and just get rid of the stuff that's here. Now, I might keep a little bit there on the bullet itself. Make my brush a little bit smaller. Keep a little of that motion blur on the bullet itself. Uh, let's keep a little bit of motion blur like right there. Let's, mm, that's, that one's okay. Let's say this one right here has a little bit of motion blur. This one right here should have a little bit of motion blur. Sort of picking and choosing now right and then all this other stuff on the outside we can kind of get rid of that a little bit 
And we're starting to see a little concept come together. It's pretty much almost done at this point right now. I'm just sort of looking for things that I feel like I need, uh, I can add, right? So I'm going to say maybe one more Gaussian Blur. For the hell of it. Let's see what happens here. A Gaussian Blur, another, let's just say two pixels this time. And let's go ahead and use that mask again. Let's just click a couple times, like right here. Maybe Gaussian Blur that a little bit. I'm just like selecting some points. That way I can get some like more depth of field going on here. It's not completely accurate, but it does look okay. It does look pretty good. And I'm pretty still satisfied and happy with it. So once I have this done here, pretty much when you said you're done with the entire concept, you want to combine everything one more time. So Control J, Control E, and we're gonna go ahead and add a uh, we're gonna add a filter, sharpen, pretty much just press sharpen right there. Basically, as a nice little sharpen, and it kind of gives that nice cool vibe to it once again. Now, if I really feel like it, which I really kind of do for some reason, I kind of want to take a blue and click around a little bit to fill a little more space. Maybe not that harsh of a blue. Control U. All right, something like this a little bit more. What do you think? Okay. I said, what do you think? Like, you can actually help me out right now. But I think that's pretty okay. So now I'm going to add one last thing to finalize the entire thing, which is going to be another color balance. And what I did was I had 57, 36, and then 49. And pretty much I lowered my opacity down on that color balance just a little bit. And then I said to myself, okay, I'm pretty much done. And I'm just going to add a little text in here. Why not now? Let's go ahead and add the text that says, uh, uh, action banner design tutorial. And we'll just make this nice and white. Put that up there. It looks pretty good as well with some text in the middle. Just like so. And it was, of course, designed by at CISO HQ. Shrink that down a little bit. And then that pretty much finalizes and completes the tutorial for today. Now, hope you guys did enjoy. Like, I did read the comments below that you guys really wanted more 3D stuff and 3D um, manipulations. I'm still going to work. I'm working on one 3D manipulation right now. However, I'm not finalizing it. I'm not figuring out what I really want to do with it yet. But for now, hopefully this holds the pieces together since Call of Duty Beta is out for PC and stuff like that. Call of Duty is coming out very soon. Sort of like all these FPSs are coming out, I guess, like, uh, how do you call it, PUBG and things like that. So this tutorial is not entirely for the effect that you're getting for the overall banner right now, but more or less the sort of combination between the modeling a bullet, your own bullet, uh, the combination between a really cool uh, font with this really awesome, simple little, uh, I guess, bevel to it itself. But things like PUBG, Call of Duty, all those really popular games right now, all those first-person shooters, CSGO, all have bullets in them. They all feel really awesome, impactful, and action. So I want you guys to utilize this tutorial for more things of that purpose of then, of course, introducing yourself into more of that genre of, like, I guess, manipulation or sort of fixing yourself in that direction, right? I'm just trying to help you guys understand what this video was about because I know the entire final image here is not crazy, crazy, crazy good in my opinion. And it looks, I think it just looks attractive though. That's the reason why I did the tutorial. So I hope you guys did enjoy this today. Of course, two likes on the video equally. See me down below. And as always, guys, don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Follow me on Twitter, at HQ, and I'll talk to you guys later. HQ out. Peace.